Hey everybody, this is the Sliders Review. And since it's Women's History Month, I'm here today to talk to you about Justice League Unlimited Season 2 Episode Grudge Match. Grudge Match is an extremely good episode in Justice League Unlimited Season 2. And in fact, it's my favorite of Season 2 because for the most part, the 13 episode, like... Um, Legion of Doom story arc is not my fave. There aren't that many episodes in season two that I particularly like. And they just seem kind of scattered and everything. Especially when you're coming off of that of season one. And, you know, and after season one, it is really like, how can you top that, you know? Like, the way they ended season one, it seemed like it was going to be like the last. But Cartoon Network came around again, so I was like, look. We want more. <laughs> so the idea was pitched by the whole Legion of Doom, and then there you are. It just felt like that season never made no sense because you find out the switcheroo of what like Lex Luthor was really doing. But Grudge Match is in a very, very extremely good choreographed like cage fight type match. And it's some of the best choreography they've ever done in their DCAU like run and everything. Because normally when you have like fighting and say like the Superman series, he'll just throw like a bunch of like hard punches. Or if you're in the Batman series, he'll throw like a bunch of like huge uppercuts and like a kick and that's about it. But here, oh my God, they really did something. When they went overseas and they did the animation and they really shown that, hey, we can make the fighting look realistic. Of course, that would carry on. You know, they, because you know, they do like a lot of anime type stuff and martial art type stuff over there in like Japan and stuff. And so this led to a lot of the good choreography we started seeing in the animated movies and in other television series like Avatar The Last Airbender and stuff. And so like for this all-female episode, there are plenty of superhero females in this one. We see the return of some fan favorites from that of season one, like Huntress and that of Black Canary. They haven't been seen since in the middle of like season one. And in fact, not only is this their first appearance, but it's their last voice appearance. They do appear towards the end in like a bunch of cameo type stuff, but that's about it. But there's nobody voicing them and stuff. And so we see Amy Acker last time as Huntress. I'm not sure who plays Black Canary, but this is the last time we hear her voice. And in fact, this is the last time we even hear Jeffrey Combs as the question. A huge fan favorite of season one. And like, you know, I'm very, very, very shocked that this was the last time we got to hear some of these voices. And it's actually some of these characters and stuff. Because after this, like I said before, they all don't reappear until the very last episode. Also, I believe her name is Maria Canals. The one who does Hawk Girl voice. This is her last time voicing that of Fire. And Fire had like one episode with Fire. Um, I'm not sure if Ice showed up, but it was Fire, The Flash, and Hot Girl. And so it was like early on, and I think it was probably like the first episode. And I particularly didn't like that episode. And so Fire was had like a really cool look to her, but they never did much with her and stuff. In fact, when they had Justice League Unlimited, they had like a huge roster of like superheroes and villains, but no person voicing them and stuff. Now, a lot of the villains came from that of James Tucker. A lot of people that he grew up with, and also the heroes too, a lot of people he grew up with that he liked and everything that he said he never would imagine would ever appear in animation, he decided to bring them on over. And that's because, uh, you know, those aren't really like huge, big DC names and stuff, and their outfits are very silly looking and stuff. So he got to bring his childhood on the screen, even if it was just for like a cameo. And so Huntress and Black Canary 
are like the two main central focus of like this episode, especially that of Huntress. Now Huntress has a very, very good solo episode in season one. I will talk about that in a much later time. I'm not sure if I want to do that for Women's History Month, only because I'd rather do that in a separate video and I do other like episodes of like Justice League Unlimited in my regular template and stuff. And so like, Huntress was like a huge fan favorite, even though she has a huge chip on her shoulder. She's a vigilante and part of the Bat family and also part of Birds of Prey. And so like, in this episode, this interesting because she teams up with Black Canary uh, for a brief time because those two hate each other and I mean they hate each other because of the last episode they was in also what's funny is that Vixen and Hot Girl team up and they don't like each other either because you know Vixen is dating Jon Stewart Green Lantern and that is hot girls like former like lover and stuff and so this makes for a really interesting time i remember when i first watched this episode um i watched it like out of order and stuff because the last season i watched completely out of order and also with that of justice league unlimited i watched on the, um out of order so when i bought it on dvd years ago like you know i finally got the sierra thing but then one of my discs messed up so then i just said i'll just buy it on blu-ray so i had the whole thing in one little disc um cartridge and stuff and boy on blu-ray it, it looks so much better when you have it on blu-ray and you got it on one of those high def like flat screen tvs my god the clarity of it all and so like for the most part, this episode is really interesting. I remember when I first watched it, I didn't quite understand what the heck was going on. I didn't recognize the villain. <laughs> I didn't understand why they was um, under his mind control, but then I realized, oh, okay, that's what's going on. And so you really have to pay attention. You can't take no bathroom breaks when you watch it in real time, you know, on broadcast TV and stuff. And so basically what it is, is that roulette, She's kind of in the slumps. Her little cage match of like metahumans isn't what it used to be because Black Canary tore the whole place down in season one. And so she realizes she needs an attraction and a huge one of that. She needs some money. And I love the character of Roulette. I love the way she looks. She wears like this long red dress with like a split. It has a green dragon tattoo on her back shoulder going all the way down to her hip. And it's just like, you know, she has a very unique look. She's been brought to live action twice in the Arrowverse and that of Smallville. I don't remember her in um, the Arrowverse. But sadly, I remember her in Smallville. This was around the time Smallville was starting to slump in the ratings and the storytelling. And it was around the time it had to start like grinding things up because it was starting to suck. And this is when that season they kept doing the whole switcheroo thing. They are bringing this huge villain that people would know. But then it turns out, oh wait, the villain is actually working for the hero and helping them out. And it's like, what? That's stupid and lame. <laughs> but the actress who played her looked exactly like her and stuff. And so that was like a nice little um, look and stuff that she had going on. And so, like, she goes to Lex, who's now the leader of the Legion of Doom after he took down Grodd. Because Grodd's big plan of bringing all these supervillains together was to turn the entire world into monkeys. <laughs> and Lex just ain't having that. But Lex is starting to go a little nutty in the head because he misses Brainiac. And he's trying to reconstruct Brainiac from the tiny piece that he has. And so everybody thinks Lex is going kind of crazy because like, you know, he keeps talking to himself, but he's really talking to the brainiac consciousness that's inside his brain. And so his girlfriend Talia thinks he's nuts and all this. Well, ta uh, I'm not telling him, um, what's her name? Roulette shows up and, you know, her and Lex talking, they agree that like, you know, he'll agree to like fund her new um meta human brawl but like you know he has to take like huge cuts and stuff like that so anyway she has a great idea instead of super villains because he doesn't have that many female super villains and stuff 
Because then they said she's going to get superheroes. So then we see Black Canary. She's beating up some, like, you know, bad guy. And she runs into Huntress. Huntress at this point in time hasn't been seen. And she's actually getting along with Black Canary. But Black Canary wants nothing to do with her. It's a weird turn of events because she really hates Black Canary, but she helps beat the bad guy up for her because Black Canary is about to get her butt whooped. And so when they part, she's talking to Question, who's investigating some type of like ice cream conspiracy <laughs> and stuff like that. And even he questions, why in the world you want to help her? And she beat the snot out of you last time. But, you know, it's a mutual thing of respect. And so because of that, um, Huntress starts to tell that uh, Black Canary and puts a trace on her. She glows the blood haven of all places. And we get a Nightwing cameo in a silhouette. And that was nice. <laughs> So it turns out Black Canary went to Metal Brawls, a new location that's been put up in Bloodhaven. And so we finally get to see the secret identity of that of Huntress and stuff. And she looks a little bit like Wonder Woman a little. And so she's there, you know, and she's scoping out the place, seeing what's going on. And she sees Black Canary and Fire fight. Of course, Black Canary whoops her behind. So Huntress has literally no idea what's going on. And for the most part, not even the audience really knows what's going on, unless you know who the other male villain is, Sonar, which I do not. <laughs> And so, like, she tries to talk to Black Canary, and Black Canary just whoops her behind and stuff. But, like, before that even happens, I think, is it the elevator scene or not? Well, anyway, there's a, at some point, there's a cool elevator scene. It's the traditional superhero goons in the elevator, like, going up. And then, you know, the door is closed, and you whoop that person behind, and the door is open. In a way, she tries to, like, talk to Canary, but Canary ends up, like, fighting her. But, so, and it's a great fight between these two. When I say the choreography is great, I mean it is stellar. So, she's able to knock the earpiece out of Black Canary's ear um, to communicate with the watchtower, and then she cracks it. After that, Black Canary snaps out, but Huntress doesn't know it. They both get, like, you know, put in, like, a holding cell. And they figure out that one of the villains is using some type of mind control through the earpiece and everything. And so Roulette comes there and talking about how, like, you know, y'all are, y'all, since y'all discovered my plan, I gotta take y'all out, but I'm gonna make some money off y'all. And she does this walk as she goes away. It's that type of, like, seductress toot type walk where you go hip to hip and uh, side to side and everything. They made it look pretty good in animation, but not perfect. It's hard to get that, that, that walk down in animation, but they did a pretty good job. So when they're in the meta brawl thing, they have to fight Hawk Girl and that of Vixen. And once again, it is beautiful choreography. Some of these moves, man, I'm just looking at them, I'm just like, man, that looks exquisite. So anyway, they take, you know, they um, disable the earpieces and both Vixen and Hot Girl and they want to know what the world's going on. But then Roulette has like a card up her sleeve. Wonder Woman. <laughs> and the four ladies are scared. <laughs> <laughs> because Wonder Woman is an Amazon who can throw down. And one of the things I always love about um, Wonder Woman's animation when she fights is that she hits like a brick and everything. And especially when she kicks and everything, her legs are like straight. And so, like, I'm surprised they didn't have Supergirl in this episode because in the next episode, she goes to the future. So it would have been nice if she would have had her too. So they realize they have to take Wonder Woman down before she kills them and break the little force field around the dome. So Hot Girl and Black Canary, they do that. And so like, you know, while the other two are trying to fight Wonder Woman. Well, so Black Canary and Huntress, they beat up a bunch of goons trying to get the roulette, trying to get the sonar. Sonar is the male who is able to do some type of frequency thing to brainwash them and stuff. And so, like, well, he uses sonic vibrations in this weird device of his. Now, the mind control, maybe 
maybe that's not him. Maybe that's Talia, um, Lex's girlfriend with the um, mysticism. But then she could have just used her magic just to um, do that. They think it might be Gro it's, it's some weird kind of way. I think it is Sonar. So I'm like I said, I'm, I'm very unfamiliar with him and everything. And so like hot girl and, and like vixen they are literally trying their best but one of the women is literally killing them in the ring and everything and so after fighting like the goons and stopping sonar and everything they disable his device and one of the women snaps out of it right before she was about to crush the skulls of both hot girl and vixen <laughs> <laughs> and the actress who actually voices Wonder Woman is actually in this episode. She finally says like one word and stuff. And this is the part that ends, you know, with the bad guys getting taken away. And, you know, Black Canary is all like, you know, I can talk to the lead and getting you back in. But Huntress doesn't want to because she likes doing the vigilante solo thing. She's very edgy and is willing to kill. And, of course, the league is not about that. Now, the ending is very odd. At that time, I really didn't think much of it, and I think I'll how old I probably like 19, 20, something like that, 18, 19, something like that. So I really didn't think much of it because I was very young. But now when I look back on it all, and now that I know how Bruce Town is, it's just kind of like, Lord Jesus, Bruce Town, why are you so horny? <laughs> Basically, um, Black Canary and Huntress are kind of like talking to each other but in a flirtatious kind of way and talking about how they can beat each other behind no talking about how men love watching women fight like this and like cages and stuff like that and they decided the best two out of three but this is the part that gets weird after the flirting banter that they do they begin to take off their garments <laughs> <laughs> Black Canary takes off her jacket in a very seductive kind of way. And then Huntress is just staring her down like she wants to jump her bones, taking off her utility belt. And that's it. And it's like the way she looks at her is insane. <laughs> <laughs> and then they both um, leap in the air and they, they do their kicks and it ends. And all I could think of Bruce Town, Bruce Town, Bruce Town. <laughs> oh boy. I will say one thing about Huntress. I always love that character. This is the best I've ever seen her outfit ever look in animation. Um, she had a different design in season one in a cameo, but that was about it. Then they redesigned her when she had her solo outfit. And she's appeared in live action at least three times. She appeared in her own series, Birds of Prey, which I talked about year, um, a year ago. Go watch that. She appeared in Arrow. And she appeared in uh, uh, something Harley Quinn, Emancipated Birds of Prey movie thing came out. And her outfit has never looked as cool as it has in this animation. I really love that classic um comic book look to her her mask is a little ridiculous but like everything else just looks like really cool the purples the black the cape and everything when she was in birds of prey the television series she just wore like whatever black outfit she had and whatever leather jacket or lingerie type jacket type thing she had very early 2000s and then when she was in arrow she just wore like a all leather bodysuit with a trench coat and like you know a, a mask a domino mask and then of course when she was in birds of prey she wore kind of like a jogging outfit with a midriff that was like purple and it might have had a hoodie i think either way it was just ridiculous but yeah this animated version is the best i've ever seen her look happy women's history month everybody all right i'll talk to you later bye